Who am I? I'm an immortal, metaphysical, multi-dimensional being having a human experience in what some people call third dimensional reality. Humanity has a choice between service to others and service to self. Service to others means that our focus is on serving the world, giving of ourselves, giving of our love, giving of our kindness, our compassion, our, our friendliness, um, our tolerance, our patience, all the love-related things. And then the other choice is service to self, and service to self is the more controlling, manipulative, me first, um, uh, I'll look after myself and it doesn't matter about the rest, um, the us and them mentality. And that is the choice. And not many people, I believe, have made that choice, or not consciously, and I think it's very important that we all make that choice. And in making the choice, it's not just about saying, I commit to serving others. It's important, in fact, vital to live it. We have to live it. There is an ascension process um, happening. It may not be something that people are consciously aware of, but it is very much um, happening in this world at the moment whereby people like myself and I think many others are raising the consciousness of the world. We are taking ourselves up, taking humanity up to a new level of awareness. Some people call it the fifth dimension, I call it fourth density. We are all on that path, whether we like it or not, but whether we choose to follow that path and become part of the ascension process relates back to the service to others and service to self dichotomy. And this is why, because to become an ascended being, to, to make the transit into the next dimension, um, for service to others people it is necessary to be just 51% service to others. So, you know, more than half of your output, if you like, um, is about love and kindness and support and um, sharing information, sharing love, being compassionate, being patient and tolerant and so on. So I'm totally committed to the service to, to others path um, and, and, and there are those who are committed to the other path and, and those who are, let's say, on the fence. And I think it's very important, the point I'd like to make is that it's important for everyone to get off the fence and make that commitment. I've focused and learned from that in such a way that I'm now, um, you know, totally committed to serve others to the best of my ability and to enable um, so far as possible and to, to assist people to, um, to be their best self, um, but to also to come from a place of, of love and compassion. Because this is, this is how I believe we will achieve global unity. It's all about love. It's all about choosing love. It's all about creating love. Because when we choose love, we create love. Um, it reverberates and people around us pick up on that energy. And that's what will, if you, if you like, make the change in the world, will create the change in the world. So long as there is selfishness, so long as there is greed, so long as there is the desire for power and me first, then that love is undermined and is, is almost neutralized in a way that, um, to my mind, doesn't serve humanity, but is actually counterproductive and indeed is arguably taking us in the direction that we're seeing now with COVID and the rest of it. So um, it's vital that we get back on that path of service to others and to, and to loving 
And loving ourselves, that's vitally important, you know, to love yourself first um, and foremost, because if you can't love yourself, how can you love someone else? This is, this is pure love. This is unconditional love. This is love without judgment, without criticism, without right or wrong. Love is the key, and, um, you know, if you can love yourself and if you can love others more today than you did yesterday, and I know that may sound slightly odd, but it's like having this sense of how much more loving can I be? That's a great question to ask yourself in the morning. How much more loving can I be today? How much more supportive can I be? What more can I give in service? And to offer that in service and to, um, yeah, to be that, to be an example of that because that's sorely needed in the world at the moment. You know, and I think who we are truly is is based on honesty, integrity, authenticity, and transparency. You know, those are four of my key words. There's another gift I can give you. You know, if you can um, align yourself with those four concepts, honesty, integrity, so be honest in everything, you know, don't lie. Be honest, be truthful, open up. Share your dark side, if, if need be, you know. And then integrity, which means... You know, if you believe something and, and, and it is your truth, then, then be strong in that. You know, don't suddenly say, well, yes, I believe in this, or because someone else thinks it's a good idea, you know. So it's being strong in oneself, keeping, maintaining one's integrity. And authenticity speaks for itself. Being who we really are, again, authentic, you know, um, in the moment. And transparency is... It's very much about, um, you know, openness, open, open heart, open mind. Um, and yeah, this is who I am, you know. Because when I share who I really am or what I really believe and what I'm really feeling, I feel so much better. <laughs> I don't feel so good if I say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. And, uh, if I'm not, why would I say it? But um, that itself as well has been a part of my journey. And it's, it's not easy, but it's, again, intended. You know, because if we intend it, we can do it. We can become it. We can be it. You know, um, as Morpheus um, said to Neo in The Matrix, don't think you can, know you can. It's a huge difference, you know, knowing it's that certainty, it's that certainty that you are, you know, speaking your truth, you are being authentic. Very powerful. And people will pick up on that and they will support you in turn. You know, energetically people pick up on the authenticity and the honesty and they respond. If we can stay in the moment, if we can be in the moment, if we can focus on our own healing, our own alignment, our own um, self-love, very important, then, then we see the beauty in the world, then we see that it is a wonderful life, and that whatever challenges come along, it doesn't matter, accept you know, accept what is, as Byron Katie says, you know, accept. And no resistance. It's not easy, but it's, it's, it's worth getting there. It's worth, it's worth the, um, the pain and suffering, if it, if it has to be pain and suffering. It's worth the, um, the transition, it's worth the transformation, it's worth the, um, the effort. Because imagine how the world would be if everyone thought that life was wonderful. <laughs> imagine how different the world would be if everyone could accept everyone else as they are. Right, wrong, white, black, all the duality, um, you know.
And ev even if it takes just tiny, you know, my friend of mine used to say, baby steps. And, 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 and for me, and I think for a lot of people, it is a case of baby steps, but keep the momentum going, you know. How much more loving can I be? How can I choose love in the next next time that I engage with that person that I find difficult or whatever it is? How can I respond differently? How can I respond with love? How can I respond from a place of my own honesty, integrity, authenticity, and transparency from my heart, from my true nature, who I really am? It's all about love and truth. And when you love unconditionally, you'll find the truth. When you're aligned in yourself, you find the truth. The bigger picture will come to you. But we have to be open to that. We have to be open-minded, open-hearted, open to whatever comes and allow. You know, there's a beautiful song. <clears throat> I grew up, um, my parents gave me the gift of Rogers and Hammerstein. Uh, they were the, uh, the writers of, um, for example, The Sound of Music, the musical. Um, they wrote the music and the lyrics for that and, and many other musicals too. And there's... Um, there's a song from that musical called Climb Every Mountain. Most people will know it. The lyrics are amazing. Climb every mountain, fall every stream. Follow every byway till you find your dream. A dream that will need all the love you can give. A dream that will need all the love you can give. That's it. Whatever your dream, whatever your goal, give it love. Love. And then you get to the top of the mountain. Whatever that is, metaphorically for you. It's perfect. And when you're at the top of the mountain, of course, you can see not only the horizon, but you can actually imagine what's beyond the horizon. That's where the bigger picture is. That's where the, the greater truth lies. The cosmic truth, if you like, of love and spirituality, the connection between love and spirituality. and how all the dots can easily be connected to bring us back to who we really are, our true selves. And I pray for it. You may have heard people have been talking about the so-called Great Awakening there is an awakening and it's I think a slow but sure process and there will be an awakening humanity or at least those who choose to go to the next level needs to wake up to the bigger picture. This is what will ultimately set us free and bring back our true freedom and our true 
self-respect, our true dignity, our humanity, and our love for the rest of mankind. And we can start now with ourselves, each of us individually, focusing on love, focusing on honesty and integrity, authenticity, transparency, compassion, patience, tolerance, acceptance, kindness, gratitude, all the things that are part of unconditional love and truth, our own truth. Humanity is not meant to be enslaved. Humanity is not meant to be downtrodden. Humanity is meant to be like nature, free. Self-sustaining, self-reliant, renewing, growing, 